Namaste everyone, welcome to my class. I am Vinod. We are in 10th standard chemistry chapter 4, carbon and its compounds. So in this lesson we have come to chemical properties of carbon compounds. One of the important property of carbon compound is the combustion. So combustion you have learned in your previous classes. So combustion sometimes we also say like burning. So combustion when we are defining it's a type of chemical reaction. So that will take place when a compound or a substance is provided with sufficient amount of heat energy and in the presence of excess amount of air. So when you are heating a substance, so defining the combustion reaction, uh, so we are going to select the compound or substance. So that substance, so this substance in combustion reaction when it is heated so it is heated then in the presence of excess amount of air so air so in air you know oxygen is a supporter of combustion so we can say when a substance is heated in the sub sufficient supply of oxygen so that then the substance is going to react with the oxygen producing heat and light energy so we say then the substance is burning so when it produces heat and light energy so at what temperature the substance is going to produce heat and light energy so that particular temperature we call it as ignition temperature so for the combustion reaction to take place so you are going to supply heat energy and then excess of amount of air oxygen so you are going to heat it till it reaches its ignition temperature once the ignition temperature is reached then this substance is going to combine with oxygen then you will get large amount of heat and light energy so we have many fuels which are compounds of carbon so carbon uh, generally we say like coal so most of the people will give an example like what is the pure form of carbon so they say coal so coal contains mostly carbon along with that uh, little amounts of nitrogen phosphorus sulfur and hydrogen also so coal so we are going to see the carbon we have three allotropes of carbon diamond graphite and fullerene so when these are all the pure forms of carbon when any of these allotrope is heated to a very high temperature in the excess supply of oxygen so these are going to give the product carbon dioxide gas along with this large amount of heat and light energies so heat and light energies along with co2 gas this is about the pr form of carbon the allotropes of carbon then another fuels of carbon so we have the methane gas ch4 the natural gas so this also when it is heated so during the combustion reaction so on combustion so we have in this carbon and hydrogen so carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide and hydrogen is oxidized to water h2o and then we are going to get large amount of heat and light energies heat and light energies so combustion reaction can be also considered as an oxidation reaction so what type of oxidation it is a complete oxidation reaction so which will take place when the combustible substance is provided with the ignition temperature and heated in the sufficient supply of oxygen so we'll balance this equation uh, so one carbon atom one carbon atom so we have four hydrogen atoms for this i'm going to put two here two twos are four hydrogen then count the number of oxygen here two oxygen and here two oxygen so total four oxygen are there so i'm going to put one more two in front of this so two o two so methane gas is going to uh, since it is a fuel then we have uh, LPG which is a combination of butane and propane gases also on heating it produces heat and I mean when it is undergoing this combustion reaction it forms CO2 plus H2O and large amount of heat energy then alcohol so C2 H5 OH undergoes this combustion reaction so in the presence of oxygen and heat energies so when it is heated so 
So you are going to get once again CO2 plus H2O plus you are going to have heat and light energies to balance this I am going to put 2 in front of carbon so 2 C is balanced 6 hydrogen atoms are there so 3 3 to the 6 hydrogen atoms count the number of oxygen 2 to the 4 plus 3 7 so here 1 so I will put 3 here 3 to the 6 plus 1 7 so the equation is balanced now so here heat and light energies are produced so alcohol produces heat and light energy all these are carbon compounds okay then what about unsaturated hydrocarbons unsaturated hydrocarbons also produce heat and light energy when they are heated to the ignition temperature but the difference is so in the saturated hydrocarbons undergo combustion reaction producing only the blue flame whereas unsaturated hydrocarbons where double bond and triple bond are between the carbon atoms like ethene c double bond c h2 and we have h2 c2 h4 and ethyne uh, c2 h2 for these carbon compounds the unsaturated carbon compounds so when they are heated so they undergo combustion reaction producing an yellowish flame not the blue one so and also they produce large amount of smoke soot is formed on the vessels or soot is formed on the container that is, is released from the flame which is produced by burning these unsaturated hydrocarbons so saturated hydrocarbons up to uh, the kerosene which we use or the higher level also they do not produce like c12 to c15 up to there we have the hydrocarbons in kerosene which are saturated hydrocarbons which do not produce a soot but they undergo complete combustion producing a bluish flame whereas unsaturated hydrocarbons when they are burned they produce yellowish flame like the candle flame which you have learned in your previous classes so what is the difference between burning an unsaturated hydrocarbon and burning a saturated hydrocarbon so when a saturated hydrocarbon burns so since there is a since the number of hydrogen atoms are more and the heat energy produced is sufficient for the carbon to undergo a complete combustion whereas for unsaturated hydrocarbons the carbon content is more and the hydrogen content is less so when they are burnt so there is some amount of carbon which do not undergo combustion so it's a partial combustion here so the amount of carbon which do not undergo a complete combustion reaction will produce the black color unburned carbon suit on the vessels or the containers so you will observe this even for saturated hydrocarbons i will give you one example where we are going to observe this suit formation even on burning the fuels like lpg gas or the natural gas so you can observe the suit being formed i will tell you the condition where it is formed the saturated hydrocarbons when they are burnt they should burn with i mean when they undergo the combustion reaction they should burn with blue color flame which do not produce any soot but sometimes we observe that on the gas stove when the propane and butane gas the lpg gas which we say when it burns sometimes the dishes also get a black color coating at the bottom and the flame seems to be yellowish color what is the reason for that so i have drawn this this is the burner from which the gas is lighted ignited here so the gas when it enters from the tube so we have the holes for the gas so when we light it so the gas burns so producing heat and light energy below the burner you have holes for the supply of oxygen so oxygen is sucked in from the holes at the bottom when this lpg gas burns so sometimes these holes when they get blocked so there will not be sufficient supply of oxygen when there is no sufficient supply of oxygen when these holes get blocked so you will not have the sufficient supply of oxygen so in such cases there will be some amount of the carbon which does not get burned so due to partial combustion the yellowish flame results so the partially burned carbon atoms are going to form as a suit on the utensils 
So this one has a Bunsen burner. So for Bunsen burner, if you observe the bottom of this tube, from which the gas, I mean, the top of this we are going to ignite at this point. So below this Bunsen burner, you have one opening. So this there's a round circular opening. So if this opening is closed, I mean you can close it. So when you are closing it, the bluish color flame turns yellowish. So here is the supply of oxygen. So oxygen is sucked in from inside this hole and then the fuel will be burned completely producing a blue color flame. If this is closed, you will get an yellow flame and even it forms a suit on the beakers which you have placed on the Bunsen burner. So from this what we learn is even the saturated hydrocarbons produce a sooty flame or an yellowish flame when they are not burned in sufficient supply of oxygen. Okay, on burning some of the fuels produce flame. So what is the reason for producing a flame? So are there some fuels which did not produce flame? Yes. We have seen the coal which is used in the iron box for pressing that also flame does not come. So coal does not produce flame then also it undergoes combustion reaction. We can identify because it produces large amount of heat energy just by showing a reddish glow instead of a flame. So what is the reason for flame? We observe that a flame is produced when you burn a candle. So when you burn the LPG gas flame is produced. For a Bunsen burner flame is produced and if you are using a spirit lamp their alcohol burns and you see a bluish flame whereas for coal we don't see any flame but we see the reddish glow. The reason is when a gaseous substance burn we see the flame that is if gas burn it appears in the form of flame here it's an LPG gas you see a flame here it's a gas you see the flame what about candle so candle uh, it's, it's a solid on heating it turns into liquid and then we have a wick for the candle the liquid wax raises up by due to the capillary action it raises up and then and then it starts converting into vapor and then the vapor starts burning so it is the vapor of the wax which burn so vapor of the wax is in gaseous state so it results in the flame the same way for spirit lamp you have the wick inside the alcohol so which through which the uh, spirit raises up and due to capillary action it raises up then when you light it spirit will change from liquid to vapor state at the temperature near the wick as a result of the burning of vapors we see the flame even wood also when we we burn the wood initially we can see large amount of flame later so even the, when the flame is put off we can see the reddish glow for the wood or the firewood it is because all the volatile material which was present has been evaporated and you have the wood and the solid form which is burning so the coal also if it does not have any volatile material and if it is a pure form of solid carbon in it then it is not going to produce any flame. So you can understand when a gaseous substance burn, flame is produced. When a solid burns, there is no flame because there is no volatile material in it. So the two important fossil fuels, the coal and petroleum, which are the major compounds of the carbon. So coal contains large amount of carbon. Along with that, we have petroleum which is a very big chain of organic compounds. So how coal and petroleum are formed? It was like uh, no one has the correct reason, but we are going to believe this millions of years ago. One story happened on the land and another one on the seas and oceans. So on the land, we will see the coal story. So large amount of trees or plantation got suddenly buried under the soil. So what may be the reasons we will go for three or we will take three or four reasons. Maybe it is due to the landslides. It may be due to the earthquakes. It may be due to the volcanic eruptions or it may be due to the flooding. So large amount of soil that is carried down along with the water when it is flooded, when it has flood, when it is flooded down. So it generally for the low lying areas, that flood water which carried large amount of soil might have covered. So these all may be the reasons for which 
the plants which were alive at that time got suddenly buried so when these plants got suddenly buried below the layer i mean under the layers of soil as the years passed by as the soil got deposited on the top of them as the soil got deposited on the top of them and the top of them so they were crushed they were crushed they were crushed so a very high pressure from the top a high pressure from the top before they have life they have life and it is life is due to the solar energy for the plants they are able to prepare the food in the presence of sunlight so all the energy which they have captured so was present in them before so that energy slowly got converted into the fossil fuel what we call it as coal so under what conditions so it is in the presence of i mean these are broken down we don't directly call them as decomposed or so they are broken down by the anaerobic bacteria that is in those microorganisms which can survive in the absence of oxygen anaerobic bacteria so two conditions one very high pressure very high pressure from the top and as the sink below the layers of the soil so we have very high temperature from within the uh, below the crust or from the upper part of the mantle so very high temperature under these two conditions high pressure from the top very high temperature from the bottom and in the presence of i mean there is no oxygen supply and all this life which was there which was there millions of years millions of years before got slowly converted into a strong fuel which we call it as coal so the solar energy got converted into a chemical energy in them so this is called fossil fuel this is about the fossil fuel coal so the same story that has happened even for petroleum where we get large amount of millions of chains of hydrocarbons so this petroleum is because of the tiny microorganisms or which we can call them as planktons which were spread kilometers of area then when they died suddenly i don't know exactly the reason is after their death they sank to the bottom of the sea this whole life sank to the bottom of the sea and slowly got converted i mean got covered by the soil which is at the bed or maybe the silt which is present at the bottom so they slowly got covered by the soil at the bed of the sea and they were crushed down when they are crushed down and down so due to high pressure from very high pressure from within i mean from the surface and then as a sink below there is very high temperature very high temperature from the internal parts of the earth so under these two conditions high temperature and high pressure so these very big area of life so the large volume of life which got covered converted into petroleum which we call it as the crude oil so this layers of soil which has hardened and turned into a non porous rock so it is captured between the layers of non porous rock down one we have the petroleum above the petroleum or crude oil you can call it as above this we have also natural gas so natural gas petroleum or crude oil and coal is called I mean, all the three are called as fossil fuels because whenever we say fossils they are the remains of the organisms which were dead millions of years before and their remains were captured between the rocks so when the rock is cut you can see the structure of the bones the similar way these fuels are captured in between the rocks so the name is justified as fossil fuel because they are preserved in between the rocks this is a story about the coal and petroleum so another important property chemical property is oxidation so oxidation you have learned in your chapter 1 chemical reactions so in that oxidation is addition of oxygen to a substance we call it as oxidation so who will add the oxygen or who will supply the oxygen the substance which supplies the oxygen we call it as 
oxidizing agent so for oxidation you need a substance which has to be oxidized and another substance which will supply the oxygen so oxidizing agent is very important so ethanol C2H5OH so I'm going to write it as CH3 CH3 CH2 OH is ethanol so it will be oxidized into ethanoic acid oxidizing so we have seen combustion is also an oxidation but it's a complete one this oxidation is a partial oxidation just adding oxygen so this is the ethanol is what which we are going to oxidize it so when it is when oxygen is added to it it forms ethanoic acid so ethanoic acid is ch3 c o o h so oxygen is added ch3 c o o h then we have another hydrogen atom count the hydrogen atoms we have one two three four five six so here we have one two three four then the hydrogen is oxidized to water h2o so it is balanced now so hydrogen is oxidized to water and you have ethanol which is oxidized to ethanoic acid now remember the oxidizing agents we have two oxidizing agents which are taken in two different mediums so it is one of the oxidizing agent is potassium permanganate KMnO4 KMnO4 potassium permanganate which is taken in a alkaline or a basic mixed with a base or dissolved in a base in KOH or another oxidizing agent you can use either this alkaline potassium permanganate or another one is potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7 this is potassium dichromate which is acidified in the presence I mean which is uh, dissolved in sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid so a mixture of these two can be taken as an oxidizing agent or a mixture of these two can be oxidizing agent ethanol is oxidized to ethanoic acid this is about the oxidation reaction which is very important property in the carbon compounds so thank you very much everyone